A disgusting, stinky hell where customers are constantly angry and the utensils are actually never really clean. I was serving a family the other day, a booth against the window, and the kid looks up at me with such wonder and confusion. Are you a boy or a girl? The parent, mortified, remedied the situation by freaking out and saying as quickly and loudly as possible, girl, she's a girl, her name is Heather, that, that's a girl's name, she is a girl. <laughs> now, I'm in customer service, and I've found that parents aren't always thrilled when I attempt to explain the limits of the gender binary system to their children. Uh, kids are young, they think in black versus white, yes versus no, candy versus broccoli. They don't know how to react when they see a, a, a baby or a gentle them. They don't know. And quite frankly, neither do their parents. <laughs> this whole playing with my gender expression by shaving my head and not wearing as much makeup and wearing a lot of trousers thing has really confused the customers. Are they supposed to belittle me when I forget to bring them ranch? Or objectify me when they do when I'm classically feminine? Or if I'm more androgynous, are they supposed to listen to my draft beer recommendations and assume I'm good at math? I don't know. Um, I truly blew one kid's mind the other day. I greeted the table, and this rosy-cheeked, pigtailed thing was so startled by me. Well, girls aren't allowed to have short hair, she said. And I smiled warmly and said, people are allowed to look however they want. Her eyes just widened and her mind just exploded at this revelation. She just, she grinned feverishly at me. And I was still not sure if the 10% tip was because of my service or because I contributed to his child's sense of rebellion, I don't know. Uh, another day, another table, I'm helping two elderly women read the wine list when a character in cut-off jorts and a crop top interrupts me. I am so sorry to interrupt, but damn honey, you are fierce. You rock that hair, queen. You are a sexy ass lesbian. <laughs> he struts away and I'm stunned. Look back at the two women I'm serving and the older woman offers reassuringly, that was nice. <laughs> uh, I think my personal favorite was this married couple back in June who wanted to discuss politics with me. We started talking about gay pride, our current administration, who's running for president. The man insisted that he supported same-sex marriage, and it occurred to me that he just really wanted me to know that he was an ally. And as he was leaving, he pulled me aside and apologized for assuming that he knew something about me. Uh, no worries, <laughs> I get it, have short hair, why would I be attracted to men if I have short hair? That's great, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, but he insisted that uh, he's lived in LA for 30 years and he's just gotten really good at telling who's gay. <laughs> I could have told him that day it was actually my one year anniversary with my boyfriend, but uh, language just sort of evaporates when people are being fucking idiots. <laughs> Especially when your income depends on the ability to just grin and bear it. Since leaving traditional femininity behind, I've come to this fascinating crossroads where, based on what I'm expressing that day, I get to decide which type of harassment I prefer. The catcalling objectification I've grown so fond of, or um, uh, this new kind where a man will stop me in the street and say, what the fuck are you? A man rolling down his window to yell, nice tits, or dyke. Um, I mean, not only are both <laughs> extremely pleasant, but they both come with the fear of physical violence. Yay! <sighs> there are times I miss my hair. I miss the ability to blend in, to just walk into a room without the weight of the world's stare, to exist on the sidelines, kind of polite and small. It would be easier to return to wave the white flag, settle back into the roles so neatly wrapped and polished with expectation. But I left for a reason. I am done with that bullshit. When I was 11, I began hanging out with the popular girls. 
They taught me all the rules, the Constitutional Congress of Cunts, if you will. <laughs> How to exist as your gender. Stop wearing your brother's shirts. Get your ears pierced. Wear makeup. Shorter shorts, tighter shirts. Get a bra, a push-up bra. Brush your hair, shave your legs, shave your armpits, shave your pubes, all of your pubes. Wear a thong. Red thongs are the sluttiest. Don't eat starch before going swimming. Do crunches right before the pool party. If you get your period and you need a pad, make sure to whisper and the women around you will launch into action and hand you up a tampon of the most secretive of salsa so as not to offend those around you with the knowledge that your body is menstruating. <laughs> I have lost count of the ways my bones have shrunk in exchange for pretty. I shopped in the men's section the other day. I felt strangely nervous. The associate furrowed her brow as I folded and unfolded the same cotton shirt, pretending I wasn't enraged that the same fucking shirt in the women's section was twice as expensive. It's time to leave. Leave the familiar. Say goodbye to the dusty version of yourself you've outgrown so many summers ago. Leave the ordinary. Leave your shitty boyfriend and find someone worthy of your light. Leave your two-dimensional views of the door. You are not a child anymore. You can see the shades between black and white as just two possibilities for coloring your canvas. Have candy and broccoli. Yeah. You are so much more interesting than who you've pretended to be. Your heart's supple bruising thirsts for eyes to rest on your mess and nestle in your storm. Mm. Leave. There is no home to return to. You were never really welcome in someone else's skin.